So as you know, I'm fairly new to photography in a whitewater context, but also in general. And so for the next step of my How to Do the Photography series, I volunteered as an event photographer for the Upper Yawk Downriver Rodeo. Now a quick explanation for those of you that aren't familiar with competitive whitewater. Whitewater events are usually divided into two different kinds. You have your races and your rodeos. Your races are about getting from point A to point B as fast as possible, sometimes with gates, sometimes with silly twists like mandatory rolling or mandatory swimming. Rodeos, on the other hand, are about doing tricks in an allocated time period. And so a downriver rodeo specifically is about doing tricks while going downriver in a predetermined section. So for example, this is meat cleaver. The competitors start at this first drop and need to make their way to the judges rock at the bottom. They have 60 seconds to be scored on whatever tricks they throw while they are doing so. Make sense? Cool. Back to the video. I'm shooting on a Sony Alpha 6000 with the kit lenses that come with it, so nothing fancy here. And I'm mostly shooting on shutter priority mode since this is an action thing. I'm also using manual focus because the autofocus had a lot of problems. It just kept trying to focus on the rocks and the trees instead of the competitors. This is also my first time shooting an event, and so I had a little bit of trouble trying to figure out where to set up and how to compose my shots as I'm showing off the feats of the athletes. This video then is a very, 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 very abridged version of my event photography day as I took over 6,000 shots. And so I'm only sharing my favorites or the ones that I thought were pretty cool in some other way. The day started with us arriving at the meetup spot for the event. While everyone else is getting ready, I'm running around taking photos of them getting ready. And I really tried my best to compose these shots in ways that would tell stories because the reality of the situation is it's a bunch of people standing in a field. This first shot that I want to share is of a father and son. This is Little Steven and Big Steven. In the past year or so, Little Steven has really grown, not just physically, but also as a kayaker. The older, wiser dad here is shown helping his little kid get ready, except his little kid isn't so little anymore. To me, this photo symbolizes adolescence and the passing of the torch from father to son. Little Steven has now become Big Steven, and Big Steven is now Old Steven, a mentor and a father. Next shot I want to share is of Matt, the event coordinator. Matt has spent hours of his time organizing this event, and I wanted to capture a photo that really encompassed that feeling. I found an angle that was from down shooting upwards at him to make him appear bigger as he overlooks the field, camera in hand, surveying the beginning of the results of his work. Now there is a part of me that wonders if I should have shifted the framing so that he's on the right side of the picture, but it's too late for me to change that now. The last shot I want to share from the pre-event is of my buddy Tony. The blues and the grays of the kayak and his gear form this cross that I think is really, really cool. And it draws my eyes, at least, up to his face, which bears this expression of a little bit of uncertainty, but also determination. And I think that very accurately captures the nervousness he was feeling as it had rained a ton before and the water level was up higher. Which is also something I want to talk about. Because the water levels are higher than normal, the rodeo locations had to be shifted due to safety or due to the features changing. And so what that meant for me is that I no longer knew where to set up or what angles to get my shots at or even where we were going. I would have to do everything on the fly and wouldn't be able to get practice shots in. And for someone that's this new to photography and isn't familiar with this river, it became a little bit of a challenge. Regardless, the show must go on. And so we got on the water and went down to our first spot. Where's that first spot? The first rodeo location is known as Warm Up Wave. At this point, instead of trying to tell stories of my composition, I wanted to showcase the feats of the athletes, which is something that I thought I did okay, hopefully. Uh, the first one I want to share is of number two, Steven, in a vertical stern stall. I think the verticalness of his kayak is accentuated by the horizontalness of his body, the water, but also of this log in the background. It creates this really cool kind of right angle boxy effect and I really love it. 
I did also want a close-up shot with the water droplets flying all over the place, and I got that here with number 10. I intentionally zoomed in really far, hoping to create this kind of like close-up action feel, and I hope I got that across in this shot of Seth. And the last shot I want to share is of number 12. I believe he was going for a kickflip here. He probably didn't get the air he wanted, but I still think it's super cool to see a kayak perfectly flat upside down above the water. Moving on to rodeo location number two, this is a pretty long section known as Trap Run. That's a really long section to judge. That's why I'm trying to figure out where I'm setting up too. I had a ton of trouble finding a good spot here. I was scrambling up and down the right bank, just trying to find a place to set up, and so I missed a lot of the competitors. It's unfortunate, but I did get a few shots that I liked. This first one I want to share is of number two again. The facial expression shown is what makes this photo for me. Because of all the gear and the chaos of whitewater, it's usually hard to capture someone's facial expression. I believe he just missed a trick he was going for, and you can see the frustration and the effort painted on his face. Next is number 10 again, and I promise I'm not picking favorites. It just is what happened to be shots that I liked. This is another close-up action shot that I was going for, and I actually got this one through the leaves of a tree. The shadows and the lights coming in create this really cool contrasty feel. Uh, it did take a lot of shots to get this because there was a lot of shots of just blurry leaves in front of the camera, but I like this one. The last shot that I want to share from this section is of number 13, Noah. And I took this shot as a random unrelated kayaker was just passing through. This actually created a pretty cool effect with an unrelated kayaker in the foreground and the event kayaker in the background. I do wish the guy in yellow came in about a half second slower so he wasn't as prominent. I guess I could crop him out, but yeah. From here, I actually hiked back early since it was a long and difficult hike and I really didn't want to accidentally miss the next location. Rodeo location number three is Meat Cleaver. I saw this huge boulder in the middle of the rapid and knew that I wanted to get on top of it. However, it was not that easy. I required help to scramble up and over, and by the time I got up there, I once again missed the first few competitors. Not only that, but it was extremely rushed, and I think that led to a series of kind of subpar shots this one though, I did really like, and it's of number four, Olivia in a stern stall. I think the pointy verticalness of the kayak just dead in the center of the shot with all this kind of swirly chaos around them. I, I don't know how to describe it, it's just, it's beautiful. Once all the competitors came through location three, I now had to figure out a way off this rock. Let me get to that rock. It'll be a smaller jump. Which resulted in some more climbing and some swimming and then climbing back on. And because of this, I had to rush to the next spot once again, late, once again, missing the first few competitors. This last area, rodeo location number four, is that powerful popper. And there's two rocks that kind of funnel most of the water through. I found a spot upstream looking through them, but my concern was that the elevation drop would make it kind of hard to see the competitors. And unfortunately, my concern was mostly correct. But that's okay, and the first shot I wanna share from this location is of number nine, mid freewheel as he's coming in on the approach. The top half of the photo shows kind of the judges and spectators, and the bottom half shows the competitor. And I think this creates this really cool kind of dichotomy, almost like a bunch of scientists watching a lab experiment. It's a shame that I accidentally cut off the top of the helmet of one of the judges, but it is what it is, still a cool shot. And the last shot I want to share, this is my favorite shot of the day, is of number 13 in a mystery move. For those of you that don't know, a mystery move is when you intentionally try to submerge your entire kayak and body, and it's a mystery where you went. And I think that is perfectly captured here with the rocks framing in, the crowd and the reactions in the background, the cameraman, and then this lone single paddle sticking up out of the water. Noah executed this trick perfectly, and the way he resurfaced his paddle first just added to that mystery. After this, we packed up and went on downriver and finished out the run. I don't have any photos of the awards or the end of the event as I had to leave early, and so yeah, that was the end of my day. 
And so if you're a photographer, I would love your constructive criticism, love your feedback on how I can improve, any tips you might have for me. Thanks for watching, thanks for coming in this journey. See you guys next time.